This is the Elgato Stream Deck. 15 physical buttons you can program to help you stream, but it can do so much more than that. First off, I want to show you how to make your own custom icons, which is a little quicker than the way Elgato suppose you do it. Second, I want to have a look at scripting to go further with the functionality, and then we'll have a look at some applications for video editing or controlling Spotify. Well, let's have a look. This is my Stream Deck connected to my Mac. It works on Windows too, by the way. Here you see 15 buttons, and this one is to change the brightness of the Stream Deck. The other icons are either folders or actions. Here it's a folder, and these ones are made for well, changing the volume, obviously, and a mute button down here as well. The rest are just folders for browsing web, doing work stuff, video editing, and all that stuff. We'll get to that later. I set up the top left button uh, to go to the app settings so you can change the icons and change what they do. If I press a button on the Stream Deck, it changes in the app as well. I set it up on the top left one because that's to me is always home, 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 and then to settings. Here, if you click one of these buttons, you can see what it does. Or you can create a new button here and you just drag it over from the right. I'll just use a hotkey because I use that a lot. You type in the key and then you can have a title and an icon. Now the icons. You can change out here, you can upload, or you can click the create an icon. What happens then, it launches your web browser to the Elgato Make a Stream Deck icon. It's very nice that it's here, but I just don't like this online editor. It takes too much time and then you have to upload and download stuff to import it. What I do is, and you can laugh, a square keynote. And I use keynote to make some little icons you could, of course, use something like Illustrator or Photoshop, but I'm not good at either of them. And Keynote's got a lot of built-in shapes, like these are built-in shapes, and here I just built something from existing shapes. I'll just take this one away and that one, just delete those. And here is a shape library, got lots of basic shapes, and you can just use one of those most of the time. And I like that look pretty good, and you can change the color. Uh, huh? I'll just make it red. And then the beautiful thing is you don't have to export it on a Mac. You can just drag the preview icon over to the button of the Elgato, and then it changes on the Elgato Stream Deck as well. So no exporting, importing, you can just drag it over, which I love. So you can just drag it over. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work when you drag it over to the button. In here, you have to Click it, highlight it, and drag it. No, nope, not up to there. You have to drag it down here, and then it changes. Still, it's a whole lot better than creating it online and downloading it and importing it again. Let's get into video editing. I happen to use iMovie. But first, I always have the link to the app itself. Uh, there's the I for marking the in point of a video, adding it to the timeline and the out point. Scrolling to the right, select nothing. Um, move to the left to zoom in and to zoom out buttons, obviously. Undo, always handy. Any double switch, select, then delete. And then the ones I use the most, which is trim to current uh, setting, split, and play, pause. Now you can use any video editing you like, but these are the buttons I used most of the time. So let's grab some bits of video, and in practice, and you could set this up with an automatic profile, by the way, so it automatically switches to this one. What I do, I just play my videos from the stock and use the top buttons, the I and O, to select, hey, that's an interesting bit of video. Uh, let's add it to and the timeline with the plus button. So with just the three fingers on the top right of the stream deck, I, I do my spotting in videos. Then I go to the I timeline see. below, and I'll start with the mouse in one hand and the other hand on the Stream Deck. I'll just start selecting stuff here. I trim uh, or split some bits of video, trim some more, trim some more, or delete whole bits of the video. Uh, let's zoom out, zoom in a little bit. Scroll, yep. Move the player head exactly where I want it to be, and then trim stuff and move back, trim some more, play pause, check,
I use it for trimming and selecting most of the time, but you can set up any buttons you like with video editing and automate much more, even more than that. For browsing, I have a couple of buttons here from my preferred browser, Brave and Chrome, if I, that Brave doesn't open up. When you tap the button, it opens up your web browser, and here the other buttons are for controlling YouTube videos and controlling volume and going full screen and that sort of thing. And we have email here. With email, there's only a couple of decisions I want to make. It's either delete them, archive them, respond to them quickly, straight away, or put them in my task lists. So that's how I do email here on here. And this is some other work stuff. I have to do some grades. Uh, and when I fill out these grades, I do that in numbers by hitting these buttons. I have an Apple script uh, filling, the, filling out these grades into the uh, numbers document. And here, when I do a training session, I will have a couple of buttons to go to a playlist or go back to Keynote or to the task lists. And I have some volume buttons uh, that are Apple scripted to Spotify. When I show you Spotify here, when I change the volume, it changes the volume in Spotify and not the Mac volume. Or another playlist, or another playlist, or back to the other one. And in my Spotify folder, I have some more playlists and more, and of course some more. I got skip 30 seconds, play pause, more playlists, or skip and add 20 seconds. I use that button quite a lot. And play pause again. Now the last thing I showed you to control Spotify requires something else than the built-in buttons and Spotify really doesn't work well with shortcuts and with scripting, but I used Apple Script to make it happen anyway. If you look at this one here, it says it's linked to an Apple Script. It doesn't get stored on a Stream Deck, you have to have it on your computer. If I open up one of them, maybe you can't really see them that well, but I got them linked in the video description. So you can just download these Apple Scripts and adapt them to how you like to use them. I got lots of them uh, setting these Apple scripts up to playlists. Uh, I got an Apple script to say, uh, control the volume of Spotify, skip to the next song and 20 seconds, you know, all kinds of stuff you can't really do uh, with keyboard shortcuts in Spotify. To make one of these, you just drag over the key, hotkey or open up an application. That's the one I use to make Apple scripts run. And then here you just choose the Apple script you want to choose, or you choose an app. And there's multimedia buttons built in, but they only do the media that normal Mac would do or Windows. It's nice and handy to have, but if you need more, you have to script it yourself probably. Um, for example, this is another reason why you want to make your own icons. If you select something, it grabs the icon from the computer, but it grabs a really low-res version, as you can see. Uh, so that's why I like my own uh, better. Here's some creating some profiles and switching profiles, creating folders. That's kind of the buttons you can use too. I don't really use them that much. I'll just delete these things. Now in the description of this video, there will be links to the scripts, the profiles and the icons I use. So you can just download them and you don't have to do it yourself.